Hey, hey, hey. Taff out of the Out of This World story from Our Space. If your cheating partner blames you for the cheating, it's time to get the heck out of there. And if you share a house and some dogs, make sure you take the dogs and run. Today on Our Space, we learn that it doesn't matter what we do for someone we love, they can still be talking to their affair partner on the way to our own wedding venue. Male 32 cheating fiancé female 31 Let me start from the beginning here. Yesterday I met my fiancé at her wedding venue for a four-month out meeting to finalize details. We drove to the venue separately because she was leaving straight from work. Towards the end of the meeting, she let me know that her friend was dropping off her rental car and needed a ride home and asked if it would be okay. I said yes, thinking nothing of it, as it wasn't that far from our home and I know her friend well. I get home and try to get a chat with her for the next three hours. No answer. At approximately the 1.30 mark, I texted her friend and asked if she had made it to her okay. I was very worried. My fiancé ends up coming home and says sorry it took longer than expected. She hung out with her friend for a bit before leaving. Okay, no biggie. Just let me know next time, please. Her friend gets back to me a few minutes later and says, Sorry, I couldn't make it to the venue. Didn't see your fiancé tonight. I asked her why she would say this, and she said she didn't know. She can't control her friend says and walked outside. I'm sketched out AF by this point. I have never done this, but I looked at her phone records. Yes, I did, and don't regret it. I saw that when she went outside, she called her friend that had texted me right after she went outside. I also saw an hour-long call with a number I didn't know on the way to the venue. I asked her what rental place they went to, and multiple other questions. She had quick answers, and they seemed legit. I thought maybe I'm crazy here, I need to chill and sleep on it. This morning I asked her to please see the text from her friend, asking her to take her up and I would apologize for questioning her the previous night. She said no. I said when I caught up to you yesterday on the way to the venue, I saw you were on the phone. Who was that? She said, oh, that's the friend I picked up later on. That's when I knew for a fact she was lying. I said I looked at her phone records and knew that wasn't true. She then changed your story to say, oh, I needed to meet up with a coworker to discuss a patient. Who is the coworker? And why couldn't you discuss that over the phone? I need to show him the techniques in person. His name is Michael. Okay, I'm sketched out beyond belief at this point. We never lie to each other. I asked to see the text was Michael. She says she wouldn't let me see. I said, why not if there's nothing to hide? Are you having an affair? You don't want to be together anymore. She pauses and proceeds to tell me all the things that are wrong with me. I work too much. I don't spend enough time with her. Don't listen. I'm astonished at this point. All this is news to me. I put two and two together at this point. I know something sketchy is going on. I again asked to see the texts. It took about half an hour of convincing to see these texts, and they were crazy. Sexual in nature and talking a lot of crack about me. Also, how she wanted to be with him and how there's essentially in love. She started this job one and a half months ago. He is her co-worker. He is also 15 to 20 years older and divorced with multiple kids. I've been financially supporting her for the last few months as she got back on her feet and was working extra so she wouldn't have to pick up a part-time job. We own a house which we both live in and three dogs and a horse. Sorry for the novel. I'm beside myself right now. I did not see this coming and we were going to get married in four months. Any advice would help. Update. As an update, I was finally able to sit down with her tonight and go over this. Again, she came in trying to blame me for what she did. Tried to justify the cheating and lying as a direct result of my lack of communication and listening. She said she wouldn't have had to start talking to this guy if I had been listening better. I spend too much time in the office working and don't dedicate enough time to her. I tried to explain that I was putting an extra hour to try and support her and the family financially while she was struggling so she wouldn't have to get a part-time job. She said she would have rather gotten a part-time job which makes no sense to me. She was under the impression that because this was short-lived, one week she says, and they only made out once, that we could move past this. When I brought up the texts where she was trashing me and talking sexual with him, she deflected hard, and I got nowhere with that. I told her that I'm not the reason that this is happening. She went too far and should have communicated with me or thought about the implications first. That I can never trust her again, and this is all because of her actions. Whether she wants to try and justify this is my fault is up to her. At the end of this part, it got a bit calmer. I said, listen, we just really need to figure out the house we own jointly and the three dogs. We came to the conclusion that either I stay and buy her out or we sell and get new places. The dogs, one of us will get one, the other two to be determined. So that's where this left off tonight, and we'll continue to keep you all posted on progress.
Curious what you all would do about the house. Financially, I can support it alone, but it is nearly 3,000 square feet and five acres of land, which was bought solely to have her horse. She is taking the horse when she leaves and boarding it in a barn. Wow, OP, I'm so sorry. I can't fathom why she would be looking at wedding venues with you. She thinks there's so much wrong with you. I'm sorry she gaslit you like that and made it seem like it was all your fault. This absolutely isn't your fault. She should have communicated with you about how she was feeling rather than looking outside of the relationship for some sort of justification. If she wasn't happy in the relationship, she should have left and not taken it to the point of looking for venues with a fiancé she finds endless flaws in. Second update. Day 3. I was able to sit down and have a three-hour conversation with her tonight. We talked about her relationship and what led to what occurred. It started with her telling me what I did wrong in her relationship. Lack of communication. Spending too much time working in on my phone. I don't disagree with any of these things. My mindset behind working so much was the support of our family. I run an e-commerce business on the side and I'm a one-man customer service center. And deals happen 24 hours a day. I'm never not on the clock. I could have certainly been better about setting my phone aside and responding to people the next day. The lack of communication was on both ends, and a prime example of this is the fact that I was unaware she was unhappy with any of this. It was never communicated to me. She said she felt I would have gotten upset if she told me, but never gave me the chance to work on it. I'm not a perfect person by any means, and many times I do or say things that are misinterpreted by her as rude. An example of this is a week or two ago, I was trying to help her with a budget, with her financial promise to try to set up a plan to get her on track. To note, I work in the financial industry and do this for clients all the time. So I'd mentioned that she owed me maybe a thousand dollars and she would get that back to me next paycheck. I said something like, I think it's a little bit more than that. Let's go through the transfers I have made to our joint account. It ended up being over five thousand dollars. I purpose her doing this was not to make her feel bad, but to realize how much I've been contributing. She took this as me trying to humiliate her. I was just trying to help and maybe my timing was off. She told me I have been too focused on money lately, but I was only trying to make sure we were going to be okay. We still had quite a bit to pay for the wedding, and my budgeting mentality was on overload trying to make sure we had enough. The fact that she keeps trying to justify what she did by attributing this as a direct correlation to my flaws really bothers me. She keeps telling me that she is surprised I would throw away seven years of a relationship like this. I keep having to remind her that I didn't throw it away. She did with her actions. She told me that I told too many people too quickly, and we could have resolved all of this between us. She also said that she wouldn't have had to talk with someone else if I was a better listener or communicator. I have finally determined the extent of the affair which I actually believe based on the text that I read. They began talking one or two weeks before via text. I don't know if they had met up before outside of work, but this time around, he had asked her to the park to play basketball and talk. She met up with him and ended up making out. I truly believe it didn't go further than is yet, but... It would have in the near future, I'm sure. She says he is not her boyfriend. She also took off tonight, and I have no idea where she's at, assuming with him, or a girlfriend. It is an awkward living situation, but I'm hoping this resolves in the near term. I do think she wants me to get back with her and try to repair that. I think that the main issue was a lack of communication that manifested for a long time. We got into a routine, lived our boring, simple life, and meanwhile this problem was never discussed and grew over time. She acted out instead of talking to me, and also lied to my face, talked a lot of crack about me behind my back. She can be very sneaky and I don't think I can fully trust her again. Obviously, this would be the easiest thing to do, but I don't think I would ever truly be happy. Understanding the root cause has helped me feel better. If nothing else, it will allow me to address my personality flaws, communication issues, and see things from another perspective. I started hitting the gym today and will keep a routine going. I also plan on picking back up and studying for my CFP designation. I take the week off of work to focus on my mental health. Today I call the wedding venue and officially cancel the date. We were able to get some money back but lost a bit unless the date can be resold to another couple. Unlikely. I also spoke with her parents again to keep them apprised. They live far away and I am sure that our word's sick. I continue to let them know everything is fine and calm and they don't need to worry about their daughter. I did some research and with interest rates where they are today I will not be able to find a comparable house for the mortgage I pay for this. Can barely find an apartment for less nowadays. I think my best option is to try and buy out her share and have her find an apartment. She seems agreeable at this time. We will have an appraiser out to assess the value and see what half of the equity would be and if that is doable for me. My questions to you all are, does this change your mind at all about the situation? Am I handling this properly? If not, what should I be doing different? The audacity she had to tell you that she couldn't believe you would be willing to throw away the relationship when she was the one cheating on you? What the heck? 
From what she keeps saying, it seems like she's not willing to take responsibility for her actions. It sounds like she doesn't feel remorse for cheating on you with this guy. Perhaps she needs to deal with her own self and issues, really go inwards, before trying to work on this relationship with you. If she doesn't, who's to say something like this wouldn't happen again, or she'd just blame me for the next thing, yo P. There's a new update. It's been nearly a month since this whole situation went down and I owe you all an update. Has been a very busy, emotional, and eventful month. So I'm not going to lie, the few days after this happened to me, I was a pathetic mess, roveling to get back with this cheating POS. It's embarrassing to admit, but it happened. And it was all part of the process of moving on. While in this vulnerable state, I tried everything I could do things right to make things better, but nothing worked. I was actually told that she had to make a decision, me or him, as she did the right thing choosing him. I think that's when I woke up and realized I had let my self-worth go down the drain, and I needed to take a step back and really focus on me and what was best for me. It is hard after seven years of doing everything for someone else to focus on your own needs, but that's exactly what I've been doing since. I moved our joint savings accounts to my individual checking account. I did the math of what was owed to me and transferred half of the balance back to the joint account for her to take. I have been working out every day since this happened. It makes me feel good to not only improve how I look, but helps me continue to think clearly. I've gone stew chopping for a massage. I'm with friends and family. That only was this relationship isolating of my friends and family, which should have been a huge red flag, but I never did anything for myself. Buying clothes is just not something I would do. I was always worried about providing for my significant other and animals. I've been seeing a therapist for the first time in my life on a weekly basis. It helps me talk things out, my decision making. It is something I will probably continue to do after the situation resolves, just to continue to improve myself. Now for the bigger items. I'm still living in the house with the axe. She is sleeping in the guest bedroom, and we are at a point where the only communication is, did you feed the dogs? I think she is a terrible person, and no matter what I say, in her mind, this is my fault. To accuse someone of being a bad communicator and then using that as an excuse to then not communicate her feelings to me and she is her being a hypocrite and an easy out in her delusional mind. I soft bother in trying to reason with her because she is unreasonable. I have been keeping the ball rolling with listing our house for sale. I contacted an agent, had them come, and was happy with the proposed sale price. She then requests that I contact two other agents and get their opinions, one of which was recommended by her friend. Yes, I made all the calls, set up all the appointments, and met with these people. This is how the relationship always was, and even though it's not fair, I've been willing to do it all to get the hell out of here. After meeting with all three, we ended up going to the first agent. Pictures were taken on Sunday, and the house was lifted for sale Sunday night. Open house next Saturday. Already getting a lot of attention on the real estate sites. She will be taking the horse to a barn somewhere to be determined. I had a conversation about the dogs and offered to take one or none. She said she would take all three of them to keep them together. They're a happy bunch, and I don't want to fight over taking one if that will break them up. It also selfishly allows me to pursue a clean start. Unexpectedly, I met someone about a week ago that I've been spending quite a bit of time with. I have no false expectations here, but I'm enjoying hanging out with her. She'd been through a similar situation in the past and has been helping me to this. It's really eye-opening speaking with the kind, thoughtful, and independent woman. It makes me realize what a narcissist my ex was. Completely self-centered, dependent, and manipulative. I should have listened to the warnings from family and friends long ago. I definitely fell into the trap of being in a simple routine. I wasn't enjoying life. It was just an easy situation to be in. Nice house, lots of land, great animals didn't want to rock the boat. So I just continued on. You don't really realize this until you take a step back and truly reflect. Some might say it was a wasted time, but I am really using this as a learning experience. I will not ignore red flags of the future. I will not fall into a simplicity trap. I will continue to maintain relationships with my friends and family. I just want to end this with a huge shout out to everyone on here that commented on my original post. I posted on Reddit because I had no idea what to do. Those of you that took the time to try and help a complete stranger on Reddit are amazing. I read every single comment and they all helped me get to where I am now. I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my life, wherever it takes me. Thank you all, truly. And Mothro says, So relieved the fiancé picked the affair partner. This poor guy might have stayed trapped in that relationship forever if she hadn't. Old ladies die hard chimes in. Please, sir, can I have some more? I'm just thankful he found out before the wedding. Ex and a fair barter deserve one another. She'll probably be back later, whining about what she's lost. Despite it all, it is nice to hear that you're moving on in your own way, OP. It's hard to see just how bad things are when we're in the thick of things. We often make excuses for just how bad things can get and then are blind to it all. I'm sorry this happened to you. Continue moving forward without expectations. You're going to be just fine.
What are your thoughts? What would you have done in OP's position? Thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We hate for you to miss out. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out our lounge where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.